All right, team, in this video, we're going to be talking about normalizing working capital. How you work towards a normalized level of working capital will vary from one transaction to the next. But the variables that most frequently make it difficult are the company's rate of growth and exposure to seasonality. To understand why, we can explore a business with high seasonal revenue. And for the sake of consistency, let's use our pool floats business and adapt it for regular customers that all reside in Texas. Texas is notoriously hot during the summer months. So it would be practical to assume that the company's sales ramp in anticipation of the heat and that they peak sometime in summer. Now, this company makes $10 million of profit selling 1 million pool floats at an average price of $30 each. The management team of this company, being fully aware of the company's revenue cycle, significantly increases inventory purchases early in the year. By June of each year, this company has all of the inventory it will require for the summer season. During these summer months, sales increase, inventory is sold off, and the company generates cash. The challenge is that such a ramp in working capital requires cash to accommodate both inventory purchases in advance of sales and the delay of cash receipts from accounts receivable. So let's update this chart to include cash. The amount by which a company's profit can grow working capital is hugely important. Looking at the chart, it's obvious that the company made a profit selling pool floats because it has substantially more cash after the selling season. But what you will also notice is that the company nearly ran out of cash attempting to fund the growth of inventory and accounts receivable. Cash is tied up in advance of the sale by the purchase of inventory, and once the sale is made, the cash remains unavailable to the company until the accounts receivable balance is converted to cash. Had sales spiked more abruptly, the $15 million cash balance that the company started the season with would have been insufficient. It's a little counterintuitive, but strong growth can bankrupt a company with positive net working capital. To highlight why this is so important, assume a scenario where you've negotiated a purchase price for this business that does not include a working capital adjustment, and that you can pick when you assume control. In which month would you most want to assume control of this company? Because this is a cash-free, debt-free transaction, you would likely assume control when the net working capital balance is at its highest in June. Remember that you don't receive the cash as the buyer, so you might as well pick a time where all working capital would be transferred. The challenge, of course, is that the seller would prefer to transact in a month with zero working capital build because they get to keep the cash, which is why working capital needs to be normalized. A working capital adjustment with normalized working capital allows both parties to be indifferent as it relates to the timing of the transaction. So let's work towards normalizing working capital for this example. And we can start by looking at net working capital average for the last 12 months, which is the dotted red line in the chart. In this initial example, the chart shows a 12-month average net working capital of $4.4 million. The problem is that the average includes seven months of zero activity. As the net working capital peak of $21.5 million in June suggests, the $4.4 million target is not going to be sufficient to fund the purchase of inventory and accounts receivable required to generate a full year of sales. So let's look at this table with three averages for net working capital. The first is the 12-month average. The second is the average for the company's active months, which includes any month that the company had any sales. And the third is the average for the company's peak months of sales, including April, May, and June. Extreme seasonality requires a net working capital target, otherwise known as a working capital peg, that is focused on the most active period. As you will see in the table, by setting a net working capital average that includes only peak months of activity, you arrive at a value of roughly $15 million. And if you then compare this value to the drop in cash from January to June in the summarized financials, you will see that this value more closely approximates the working capital required to operate this highly seasonal business. At a bare minimum, and per the summarized financials, the company requires $13.25 million of liquidity. This is the cash balance delta from January to June of $15 million to $1.75 million. So the working capital target for this highly seasonal company is somewhere in between the net working capital average for active months of $10.5 million and the net working capital average for peak months of roughly $15 million. To demonstrate how different this is for a business with little seasonality, let's take the exact same annual sales but eliminate the seasonality. 
It is in fact quite obvious from the chart that the amount of cash on the balance sheet is no longer necessary. In this new scenario with the exact same number of units sold at precisely the same profit as before, cash does not drop below $11 million. To emphasize this point, in both scenarios, the company makes $10 million of profit selling 1 million pool floats at an average price of $30 each. But this low seasonality business, which clearly operates in a fantastic geography where people buy pool floats year-round, requires substantially less liquidity to achieve the exact same economic result. In our low seasonality example, you will notice that reducing seasonality reduces the maximum difference between net working capital and the 12-month average. In this low seasonality scenario, the 12 month average is likely to be much closer to a suitable working capital target. To test this theory, assume that post acquisition, the business would operate precisely as it had the year it was acquired, and that control of the business was assumed in January. The working capital target of approximately $4 million would result in a working capital adjustment of $2.5 million in the buyer's favor. Because you have a working capital peg of $4 million and a January balance of net working capital equal to $1.5 million. In the Excel file associated with this lesson, you will find that this $2.5 million working capital adjustment is almost precisely the additional liquidity required for the business to operate as it did prior to the transaction. Another way to think through this is to look at what happens to cash if you start with precisely $2.5 million of cash in the month of January. By May, the cash balance is reduced to zero, which means the company had precisely the additional liquidity required to operate. It follows that for the business to operate precisely as it had in the past, it requires $4 million of liquidity. So for this low seasonality business, the working capital target would be roughly $4 million. So here's the point I really want to emphasize. With a proper working capital adjustment, it doesn't matter when a business changes hands. There's no winner or loser with the post-closing adjustment. The proper party is just being made whole. All right, team, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.